Namaste. So, in our previous video on the I Ching readings, we did two readings, two questions, and they were, reading one, what is going on with this channel? And we got the two hexagrams, 39 and 49. And then in the second reading, what to do about it? We got 18, work on what has been spoiled. And keeping still, the mountain. So we actually followed the instructions in these hexagrams. And it led us on a great adventure to Kodai Kanal. Well, that's another recent series where we met a shaman who had access to the sacraments of the sacred mushrooms. So we were able to actually experiment with them and they helped us to change our whole point of view towards this channel. So from now on, it's much more gonna be about our experiences and adventures and realizations rather than trying to present classical uh, literary spiritual paths. See, the difference between literary and experiential is that experience is as lived. And it doesn't always lead to a neat conclusion where all the answers are wrapped up and presented to you on a platter. You have to work for your answers. And a lot of people don't like this, but actually life is like that. And if we're willing to work for our answers, they're much better and more suited to our particular situation than if we get them from some book. <laughs> so anyway, after that adventure, some time passed and we were able to integrate a lot of that direction into our lives and our trips. And so then it came time for the next reading, the next question. And that's going to be presented in this video. So reading three is, what is the best way to present the new paradigm? And the hexagrams we got were 52, keeping still, mountain, and the changed hexagram is 14, possession in great measure. So now, this is very interesting, huh? If you go back to the last reading, the last hexagram, the changed hexagram, was this same hexagram, 52, keeping still, mountain. But in this reading, 52 shows up with three changing lines. Now, this is, <laughs> I don't know about you, but for me, somebody who uses the I Ching regularly, three changing lines indicates this is a big deal. Uh, these, these are instructions. The, these are the uh, revelations. And to get three changing lines in one hexagram is kind of rare. One changing line is normal. Two is like, you know, be on the alert. Three is like red alert, you know. <laughs> All the alarms are going. Look out for this one. So in this video, we're going to talk more about these hexagrams and the meaning, especially the meaning of the lines. So let's look at 52 again. We looked at it last time, but let's review it because it's relevant. Keeping still, mountain. Above is Ken, and below is Ken. So this is like all mountains all the time. The image of this hexagram is the mountain, the youngest son of heaven and earth. The male principle is at the top because it strives upward by nature. The female principle is below since the direction of its movement has come to its normal end. In its application to man, the hexagram turns upon the problem of achieving a quiet heart. 
It is very difficult to bring quiet to the heart. While Buddhism strives for rest through an ebbing away of all movement in Nibbana, the Book of Changes holds that rest is merely a state of polarity that always posits movement as its complement. Possibly the words of the text embody directions for the practice of yoga. Hint, hint. <laughs> so, keeping still is the image of not only one mountain, two mountains. One above, one below. One symbolizes the masculine, always on the upwards movement, and the one below symbolizes the feminine that has come to its normal rest. The judgment, keeping still, keeping his back still so that he no longer feels his body. He goes into his courtyard and does not see his people, no blame. True quiet means keeping still when the time has come to keep still and going forward when the time has come to go forward. In this way, rest and movement are in agreement with the demands of the time and thus there is light in life. The hexagram signifies the end and the beginning of all movement. The back is named because in the back are located all the nerve fibers that mediate movement. If the movement of these spinal nerves is brought to a standstill, the ego with its restlessness disappears as it were. When a man has thus become calm, he may turn to the outside world. He no longer sees in it the struggle and tumult of individual beings, and therefore he has that true peace of mind which is needed for understanding the great laws of the universe and for acting in harmony with them. Whoever acts from these deep levels makes no mistakes. The image, mountains standing close together. The image of keeping still, Thus, the superior man does not permit his thoughts to go beyond his situation. The heart thinks constantly. This cannot be changed, but the movements of the heart, that is, a man's thoughts, should restrict themselves to the immediate situation. All thinking that goes beyond this only makes the heart sore. So this was a very important point in this instruction received from I Ching. To keep the attention and mind and thoughts focused on the here and now. When we use communications media like internet and YouTube and video, there's a tendency to get abstracted huh? because we're speaking to an imaginary audience. I mean, the audience is real. But our idea of it is imaginary because we don't have access to all the data. YouTube keeps that to itself. <laughs> anyway, so we have a picture of what we're doing that's based on a mental conception instead of on an actual perception. Being in the moment, being in the here and now means that we restrict our attention we don't let it wander towards abstractions about things far away. We keep it close. And we stay within the boundaries of the here and now. And this gives quiet to the heart. Because the heart is sore from many years of wrong living and running after this and that that's just over the horizon or just around the next corner or whatever. Instead, we simply take what we're given and deal with it in the moment. And this makes us much saner and happier. So, what do these lines mean? We have the first, the second, and the fourth line changing. So let's take a look at those. The lines. Six at the beginning. Keeping his toes still. No blame. Continued perseverance furthers. Keeping the toes still means halting before one has even begun to move. The beginning is the time of few mistakes. At that time, one is still in harmony with primal innocence. 
not yet influenced by obscuring interests and desires, one sees things intuitively as they really are. A man who halts at the beginning, so long as he has not abandoned the truth, finds the right way. But persisting firmness is needed to keep one from drifting irresolutely. So there has to be a resolution. There has to be an imperative, an intention. And in our case, of course, the intention is still, as it has always been, to communicate the insights and experiences on our path with others so that their path may be enhanced uh, and uh, they may make advancement. Um, but now we're going to change the paradigm from the traditional or scriptural or text-based paradigm. We're going to jump into the, the foaming sea, <laughs> the ocean of spiritual experience. You see, when the path is driven by experience, then the questions that naturally come up in the course of those practices lead us to consult the scriptures for explanations and also other travelers on the path and so on. And this is the second stage. The next stage is symbolized by the second line. Keeping his calves still, he cannot rescue him whom he follows. His heart is not glad. The leg cannot move independently. It depends on the movement of the body. If a leg is suddenly stopped while the whole body is in vigorous motion, the continuing body movement will make one fall. The same is true of a man who serves a master stronger than himself. He is swept along, and even though he may himself halt on the path of wrongdoing, he can no longer check the other in his powerful movement. Where the master presses forward, the servant, no matter how good his intentions, cannot save him. So this refers to the second part of the, the plan, of the instruction here. The first part is to just keep quiet and integrate the changes from the previous experience. And the second part is don't try to save everybody. There are many people who are set in their ways, who are set in their intentions and their boundaries, and will continue in the same way no matter what. So don't worry about them. Don't get swept along with them or by them into making compromises that um, sully the integrity of the teaching. We want the teaching to be as it is, without any compromise with conditioned consciousness, with rigid ideas and dogma and doctrine and that sort of thing. We want a teaching that presents the path as it is. And from what we've seen and experienced, only the people who use the entheogens are making substantial progress. Everybody else is simply saluting the flag of dogma and doctrine and playing their role in these religious organizations and getting some social benefits as a result. But they're not getting the original spiritual benefit, which is offered by the true sacrament of nature, the mushrooms. So this leads us to the third line. Uh, it's actually the fourth line, but it's the third in our sequence here. <laughs> Six in the fourth place. Keeping his trunk still, no blame. As has been pointed out above in the comment on the judgment, keeping the back at rest means forgetting the ego. This is the highest state of rest. Here, this stage has not yet been reached. The individual in this instance though able to keep the ego with its thoughts and impulses in a state of rest, is not yet quite liberated from its dominance. Nonetheless, keeping the heart at rest is an important function 
leading in the end to the complete elimination of egotistic drives. Even though at this point one does not yet remain free from all the dangers of doubt and unrest, this frame of mind is not a mistake, as it leads ultimately to that other, higher level. So obviously this is talking about sadhana. And so in the third stage, or in the third phase of this new paradigm on this channel, uh, we will put the emphasis on practice rather than doctrine, experience rather than texts, and the uh, superluminal or beyond the mind, uh, transcendental aspect of the spiritual quest and how the entheogens as sacraments assist in this high transformation. So we're going to talk a lot about them and about their properties and effects and how to do them. But before we even get into that, I want to make it very clear that I'm only talking about you know, a handful of natural substances, no synthetic chemicals, no, you know, drugs made in a factory. But these are natural substances which grow, which appear naturally in a full ecosystem, a climax biosystem, as it's called, and which uh, enhance the human consciousness towards that end which is common to all of nature, which is the complete enlightenment of the soul. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.